it's like nobody else's. It just it feels like home and it's like it's what defines our home. <laughs> There's no better person than me to describe Amma's cooking, I guess, because I have taken that food for almost 20 not 20 28 years, I guess, like years from since my childhood. I think I think in this world nobody can beat that food. For me at least, yeah. I think mom's food is the best. I think everybody will will connect to that. It tastes really good. I'd say it's the best food that I could have. In my family, everything we do centers around food. Whether it's weddings, birthdays, or even Christmas parties, it's all about food. Eating is our primary recreational activity. It's what we do when we get together. The elders play cards and gossip about other family members, and if the food sucks at an Indian wedding, it's all we'll remember. Food is what ties us all together. I mean, it defines home. It's how you open up your home to somebody in an Indian culture like It's very rare that you would invite somebody over and not serve them some kind of food because that's how we share love and hospitality. Food brings everybody to the table because food plays an important role there because no matter what culture you follow but this way we get to discuss a lot of things uh, you know about the culture, upbringing of the kids, whatever or the children's marriages or anything or adapting to the new land or adapting to the new culture so that's the reason and i don't think it is only indian culture if you go around any country what do you mostly connect with the food the drinks and then the third thing is like how beautiful is the country right so every time we go somewhere it's like oh my god the food was so awesome i think because um food connects to our soul whether uh we look into it like very spiritually or not um people say you are what you eat so anything that you can connect to from your heart i think that makes you like really feel happy the women in my family like the ones in most indian families are the best cooks in the world but they had to overcome a few obstacles and navigate some challenges before they got that way okay the first meal i made for your dad was when we uh, it was in australia This was 2 days after I landed in Australia. I wanted to make him some upma and we went and got a pre uh packaged one packaged upma ingredients and everything. I did not bother to look. It had already salt in it and I added on top of it more salt. So it was not upma as dot dad calls it. It is upuma. Upu in Telugu means salt. That was very funny. So um not that I, i i would not claim that i did not know cooking at all before coming to us or before i cooked for my husband um i have been cooking since 7th grade and i was like very proud of my cooking and i have invited my friends over and i have like my mom was a teacher in my school so she was not at home most of the time so i have invited friends have made those as what not like all complicated dishes for them as well um but when i came here first time and i was uh, um So she was about to come for lunch and I made a cauliflower kura that day and just simple just dal kura and rice and um here funny thing is salt and sugar looks exactly the same and I don't know why they would do that but they did not keep salt in the original salt box they had two different bins one for salt and one for sugar without any labels on it and I could have been more nicer to taste it but I thought like hey come on cooking is like easiest thing and i'm just making a cauliflower curry i added sugar instead of salt and um it was lunch time and he was about to be home in between 5 to 10 minutes so i in my panic i just added salt to the kura and i just served it to him and i think he is the most modest person, person on this earth he just said that this is awesomely delicious of course i could not eat that food but that's a different story. <laughs> There's something really strange about how the women in my family became such talented cooks. This culinary wizardry isn't something that gets passed on from mother to daughter or generation to generation. My mom never taught me how to cook. Uh, my interest in cooking was more from reading all these magazines that my mom used to uh, get 
and more moreover there used to be recipes for leftover food and since we grew up in a joint family we always had something or the other so i was very curious how i can bring flavors that i like out of the leftover food so that was pretty much how i, I learned cooking okay, they when my grandmother uh, used to tell some recipe to my mom she would say uh, just use that 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 and then just go about and when my mom will ask how much to put there was not not like a spoonful of this and two spoons of that it was like handful of that and hand can be like pretty much everybody has a different measurement right so my mom always said that even if no matter how much recipe i'll provide you what you make out of it will be your signature dish you will not get what i used to make and not like it's being rude or arrogant but it's just that you will bring some different flavor based on how you are feeling about the food versus she will bring a different flavor how she feels about the food so she said that it was kind of very different for to each person and unless you are really interested in cooking you will not be able to bring the flavor out of it so uh, that was I, I mean i know it just does not connect or maybe it connects but it is more about your emo- emotions on occasion I've had the not so brilliant idea of asking my mother how I could replicate one of her dishes. Friends of mine have stood next to their Indian mothers, mimicked their every move, and failed as well. And if you ask my mom for a recipe, she'll give you vague instructions with things like a dash of this and a handful of that. And it turns out there's a reason. Uh, in most of the Indian homes you won't find the older generations, you won't find the modern generations like Sarisha. They all follow even Rama herself, who is a fantastic cook, Rama your cousin. She's a fantastic cook, but she I haven't seen her use any recipes. Yeah. Uh, no recipe cards. Yeah. But maybe baking is more precise, so it has to uh, people definitely have to use recipe cards for baking. Yeah. But as for Indian cooking, you know, a pinch of this, pinch of that, a word like, you know, and in, in between, you know, you taste to see if everything is correct. If not, you add a little bit more, or if you think something is more then you know you have other like a little bit pinch of brown sugar to add to you know balance it off if it's some if it turns spicy as i said i don't use recipes um i know like i call something pav bhaji just because i use a pav bhaji masala but it has a total different probably ingredients and the way people cook but i think at the end of the day if the it tastes good it tastes good i guess It's chaotic and loud, but also full of a lot of energy and love and always good food. Yeah. <laughs> you have lots of characters there, right? So it's nice in that sense. You, 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 I think there are different characters, like especially like elder ones are, in a way, they are different. You, yeah, then you come to the next generation, they are different. And then we are... Uh, in a way we are completely different from them so the conversations between these groups of people really gets funny everyone has their own limitations everyone has their own uh temperaments and i think we can set those things up aside and keep those things aside and just have fun for the fun part through trials and tribulation resilience and persistence these women are the foundation and support system that help families like ours build our lives We have our dramas, disagreements, and disappointments, but what family doesn't? But regardless of all that, we build bridges, heal our wounds, and find our way back to love with delicious Indian food that all gets made with zero recipes.